Hi there, I'm Katherine Cole, one columnist for Mix Magazine and the Oregonian newspaper, both of which you can find online at OregonLive.com. Today I'm tasting through some sparkling wines and I tried to have some fun with it this time and um, explore the various degrees of atmospheric pressure in sparkling wines. Now this is something you don't often hear people talking about, the various degrees of atmospheric pressure in sparkling wine. But the fact is that not all bubblies are made the same. Some can be quite fierce on your tongue with very sharp bubbles and a lot of them, while others can be quite soft and smooth with just a few bubbles. So if you're someone who doesn't really love champagne, perhaps you find it to be too sour or you find the bubbles to be a little too sharp on your tongue, you might want to try and explore some of these wines we're going to talk about today. Um, so we're going to start at this end with this lovely wine that if you look at it in the glass, it actually looks almost like a typical red wine. You wouldn't even know that it's a sparkling wine. Um, in fact, it is a Bracchetto d'Acqui from Italy, from the Piedmont region, and uh, it's actually made very near where this wine is made. This is one you might know. It's Boscato d'Asti, from the town of Asti, which is also known for Asti Spumante. Um, but this wine is really neat. It's, it's very soft, very few bubbles. Uh, it's somewhat sweet. It's delicious with dessert, and it has a lovely cherry nose and palate. Uh, I highly recommend you give this one a try if you like a sweeter wine and if bubbles are not your thing. This one is a Prosecco, and I, I just love Prosecco. Some people kind of frown upon it because it can be a very simple wine, but I think there's a lot to be said for simplicity. It has a very clean, pure flavor. I almost liken it to water, in it, but that's in a very good way. Um, it's a delicious aperitif. It's just so refreshing before you start a meal, and it's also a wonderful base for cocktails because it has such a neutral palate. Um, Proseccos tend to have just a lovely, kind of light, lemony um, nose and palate to them, which it's just it goes with everything. And Prosecco does have a little less pressure than a fully carbonated wine. So you'll notice that the cork is pretty much like a standard wine cork, which is what you're finding with these uh, lower pressure wines over here as well. And there's just this one added touch, which is this. It's called a spago, and it is a string that holds the cork in place, just in case it does decide to pop out. Um, now we're moving on to a really interesting kind of obscure wine. Um, I actually wrote about a red wine from Bougie recently. This is a different grape. I think the other wine I wrote about was the Mondeuse. This is a grape called Cerdon. And it makes this lovely, kind of semi-sweet, sparkling wine. Um, they use Méthode Ancestrale, please excuse my French accent, which is terrible, which is really the most basic way of making a sparkling wine. They don't add any sugar. They just let the wine do its double fermentation in the bottle without really touching anything. And it just, it's a lovely kind of rustic wine. It has kind of a crab apple flavor to it, and it's just a lot of fun. So now we're midway through our selection here, and there's not really a scientific way of classifying these wines by their pressure, but I suppose if you wanted to use a term, you would say that the wines at this end of the table were more perlon, and now we're more in the pétillon um, end of the spectrum. These wines have a little more bubble. They're not quite all the way to a champagne that would be full of bubbles, but they've got a little more pressure, a little more zip. Um, and a little more of that kind of excitement in your mouth from the bubbles. And you can see, as you pour them, you'll see that there's going to be more foam at the top of the glass the more pressure there is in the bottle. The more pressure there is in the bottle, the more CO2 there is in the bottle, which is trapped in the wine and it comes out and expresses itself through the bubbles. So, now here we are in the realm of Petillon. Um, and what do we have here? We have a couple of Bouffres, which are fun. Uh, these are sparkling wines made from the Chenin Blanc grape, which is just such a lovely grape. It's just so clean and floral and pretty. Um, it's kind of an under underappreciated grape, and it just makes some really nice sparkling wines. Um, here are two nice examples, and uh, neither of these is really 
going to give you that sharp, harsh feeling in your mouth that you might get from a, a champagne. If you're someone who doesn't like champagne, you should definitely try these. They're, I wouldn't say sweet, but just a little bit fruitier and uh, a little lighter and a little softer than something like a champagne that some people might find to be a little fierce in the mouth. Now, I'm going to move on to a really fun wine. This is from the uh, Southern Beaujolais, so it's made from the Gamay Noir grape, which is just a fun, fun grape. And this definitely smells and tastes like a Gamay Noir. It's got really fruity, tooty strawberry notes, uh, a little bit of even cotton candy to it. But it's on the drier side, definitely a lot drier than the wines that were down in this end of the spectrum. Uh, and this is kind of a fun one because of its title. It is called, in a French accent, which I cannot do, F A R V, and then 100 in French is sans, so it's effervescent. Very cute. This is a fun one to try. And last but not least, this is something that recently came to my attention. It is a sparkling Pinot Grigio, and it's widely available in stores and supermarkets. It's kind of a fun bottle. You can see this glass is full of bubbles, and as you look down the row, you'll see that the number of bubbles in this glass are, is much higher, and there's just a lot more uh, liveliness. There's a lot more activity going on in this glass. So you can see that these other wines are indeed sparkling, but not all sparkling wines are made the same. There's one other thing I want to talk about today, and that is alcohol by volume. The wines we have here today range in alcohol by volume from 6 to 12%. For me, it's just splendid news because if there's anything I can't stand, it's a wine that's too alcoholic, goes straight to my head, and it interferes with my food. I think it's just Fantastic. I think that lower alcohol wines go a lot better with food. They're a lot more fun to sip as aperitifs throughout the evening when you don't have food to wash them down. Um, they don't interfere with other things. I just, I can't say enough good things about low alcohol wines and a number of these are in the 6 and 7% alcohol by volume level, which is just terrific. And in fact, these two here, the Italians, um, both from Piedmont, are just so delicious with breakfast and brunch. Um, they have a little bit of sweetness that make them terrific accompaniments to things like uh, sausages and bacon and eggs, so, or even pancakes. So I hope you've enjoyed this discussion about sparkling wines and the various degrees of atmospheric pressure. And I hope those of you who thought you didn't like sparkling wine now have reason to go out and try something new and also possibly try a couple new words. Pernon and Petillon. Thanks for watching and again please check out the columns on OregonLive.com.